Alrighty, in this video, I'll be creating a Notion formula property that we can use to filter and group database entries via last edited time. Really appreciate hitting 800 plus subscribers over the last four months. And last time I checked, over 25% of you that are watching my videos are subscribed. That's a really great improvement from earlier on when I started. But if you're gaining value from these videos and you're able to implement some of what I'm showing into your workspace, I'd really appreciate a like or subscribe. So thank you so much for all the support. As you can see on the screen, we have three task database entries. Three properties we're gonna to need today are the last edited time, which is an automatic property, formula property, and then a date property. The reason why I have the date property is so that we can test the formula and make sure it works because the last edited time property is automatic. And so we won't be able to adjust and see the different outcomes, but we can quickly switch out the last edited time property within the formula with the date property so that we can test to make sure everything works properly. Today we're gonna to be using the date between function and I've shown this in other videos, but I will be using it in combination with a let's formula at the second half of this video so that we can create grouped outcomes that we can see via a board view within Notion. We'll also be creating a filtered view in which we wanna see all database entries that have been last edited within a day or within a set in time period so that when you open the view, you only see entries that were edited within the time frame that you set. I think in some cases this can be incredibly helpful by narrowing down what you've most recently worked on or weaving out database entries that you haven't touched in three, five, or 10 days or whatever you wanna specify. When we wanna filter by last edited time, we're just gonna create a very basic true or false outcome. And this last edited time filter that I'll be showing today will apply to one time increment. And then I will sort of go over in the latter half again, where we can create different outcomes to create that grouping filter effect within a board view. For this initial formula, we're just gonna rely on the ifs formula I've shown in other videos and we're going to be relying on the date between formula that I've also shown in other videos. Again, the date between has two dates that we want to sort of find the difference between. We can specify the unit, whether in years, quarters, months, weeks, days, hours, or minutes. And because we're referencing last edited time and the current time, we're going to be using now to reference right now, as in the present moment. And then we also want to find the difference between the last edited time as well. What we want to do next is specify the time in which we might want to measure the difference. One thing I will say about weeks and days is that everything is rounded. So if it's been a day and a half, it's not going to include the decimal place of 1.5 days. It's always going to either be an integer of one or two days. And that is one of the sort of rounding limitations when relying on units within the date between formula function in Notion. Better way to think about days and weeks is by using the smaller unit to define days and weeks. So for days, we'll use 24 hours, and for weeks, we'll use seven days. And that way, we sort of get a little more granular with how we want to decide the appropriate and approximate unit of time that we want to measure and compare by. So in our case, instead of using days, I'll use hours so that we can get specific to the hour instead of rounding up or down by integer if we just were to use days. Basically, we have this formula now that has the date between function between last edited time and now, and we wanna see that in hours. If we wanna see entries within one day of editing, we can configure it so that when this number is equal to or less than 24, we can create two different outcomes. In this very simple example that I'm showing you today, we are just gonna use the true and false functions like we would in a very default standard if formula. The first outcome is going to show what to output when it is true, and the second text after the comma represents the outcome if it were false. In our case, we want to know if the last edited time is within 24 hours of the present moment, we want to mark it as true, and if not, we want to mark it as false. The reason why I'm using the syntax true and false is because Notion formulas conveniently shows a box like you would in a checkbox, whether that is checked or whether that is empty. Notice how when we close this out, we have this check mark up here. And so when we click on done, we see that all of these check boxes have populated that check mark. And you can't click on it, you can't modify it because 
that is the outcome that we specified based on this criteria. One way we can sort of experiment if this works or not is by duplicating this formula and then specifying a date perhaps, and then switching this last edited time variable to the date property. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to check where if we do specify a different date that we can actually change, does this checkbox work properly? In our case, anything that's more than 24 hours within today will have this empty check mark. And if we have less than 24 hours like tomorrow, that checks as well. I'd say this is a very handy way to interchangeably verify all outcomes of your formula if you're relying on an automatic property so that you'll only know if the formula is working properly if the last edited time is adapted to the constraints that you set within the formula. I just duplicated the formula, changed the variable to date because the date property has the same format as a last edited time format. And now you can check that this formula is working properly. And I just wanted to show everybody that this is what true looks like and this is what false looks like. And so that's pretty convenient one outcome formula. Very short, very simple, and hopefully I didn't take too long to explain that. So now that we have this formula set, what we can do now is create another view. In this case, because we're using a filter, we can do it on any view. But for practicality purposes, we'll just filter within a list view. And the way that we're going to create this simple view in which we're only seeing database entries that have been last edited within 24 hours of today or right now, we just have to create that filter that references whether this is checkmarked or not. So if we go to filter, we can jump to that formula and we can do checked. In our case, because everything has been edited within the last 24 hours, everything is going to show here. But we want to verify that this works. Let's add two different circumstances when this is checked and when this is not checked. And this time we'll filter by verify. So we can filter, we can delete it, and now we can go to verify and we want to do checked. So now what we see here is that only task two is showing here because it matches the checkbox differences that is directly related to the date the database entry is related to. In our case, because we're using a last edited time automatic property, these will toggle on its own. But again, this is just to show and demonstrate how this filter works, right? By being able to configure both outcomes and demonstrating what shows and what doesn't, right? So in this case, this would be last edited within 24 hours. The next view that we are going to work on sort of builds on a previous video that I shared, which had to do with the let's function and creating different statuses for what's current, what's in the past, and what's in the future. In this video, we're going to go one step further by adapting the last edited time property with the date and then creating different outcomes based on how many hours or how many days it's been since we've worked on or edited a database entry. And in this case, because we're going to be setting several outcomes instead of one or the other, like we did with the checkbox using the true and false formula syntax, we are going to be using the let's formula where you can name a variable and you can use that variable to set several outcomes using the ifs statement. And in our scenario, we're going to think about it where we want to see database entries that are edited within the last two days, edited within the last two to five days, and then edited five plus days ago. These are just very simple examples that you can easily change and configure for yourself with some quick math and some simple critical thinking. We're going to start with a new property and we're going to call this edited outcomes because we are specifying as many outcomes as we need so that if you have three or more formula outcomes that you want to sort of show based on its reference to last edited time, you can keep doing so with this ifs and lets nested formula function. So again, we're going to start with the lets formula where we're going to name the variable. I'm going to call it and then do shift enter twice, right? Shift enter allows you to create a new line within the formula as opposed to enter, which just moves you down the line. Similar to our previous example, we are just going to name that date between function as a variable. So we're just going to call it date. And then when we add the comma, after we name a variable, we specify what it is. And then we can close that out with a comma. And we can name as many variables much as the formula function will allow. Because I know that sometimes you can reach a character limit when you have too much going on within a formula. Again, we're going to be naming the date between function that we've used in our last example. We're going to be specifying between now and last edited time. And again, since we're going to be thinking about it in days, we're going to round down to the, a smaller increment in hours so that 
we can treat days in 24 hour increments and give us a little more specificity and granularity when it comes to within the last day. We're going to create that variable where we're going to be referencing the date between last sound and time and now in terms of hours. We've defined this variable and we can close it out with a comma. So now that we've defined this variable, we can use this variable several times to organize all of our different outcomes. I specified a range so that I can also show you how to do that. And I've also added some basic styling text that you could easily take advantage of with any formula that you currently use in your Notion workspace. We're going to go to the ifs function, which allows us to create multiple if then then show this sort of constraints in a list by list format. We've named the variable date. And so let's think about the increments of time that we talked about. So we want to see where date is less than two days, which means we've edited a database entry within the last two days of now. So we're basically saying if date is less than 48, then show this comma. We can end this formula if you really want with false otherwise outcome and we can close it. So now it's only going to show edited within the last two days. In our case, we're going to have several more outcomes, but by creating this logic at the end, we can create more combinational outcomes without having to break the code by editing a lot of stuff at once. I think this is a really easy preventative method to limit the number of errors you might get in a formula by adding everything at once. And I think this is a healthier way to approach formulas so that you can think about it step by step and not all at once. I think that it's a common pitfall to Notion Formulas 2.0. And if you haven't checked out my more recent video about the five misconceptions that I see with Notion Formulas 2.0, I highly recommend you do so. We've created this formula with no errors, and so we're going to add a few more constraints to create several outcomes so that we can use it within our grouping feature within a board database view. The next outcome we were thinking about was last edited within last two to five. In our case, five days is equivalent to 24 hours multiplied by five. So that's going to be 120 hours. And because we're specifying a range, we're going to have to use an AND formula function so that we can combine the constraints. And we're only going to show an outcome when both of them are true. So when we think about everything outside of the last two days, we want to think about the opposite inequality of more than 48 hours to specify that it's been edited more than two days ago. And because we've added this AND constraint, we're saying AND it also has to be edited within five days of now. So that's how we can get that range. And that's how we create that outcome. And to add our third outcome, we are going to think about over 120 hours because that is the next set of numbers that extend outside these other outcomes. When date is more than 120, we're going to say it edited five plus days ago, right? In our case, this is our final outcome. And so we only need to specify over 120 and we can say five plus days because that could mean anything above five. If we wanted to go another step above that and say 10 days, we could double 120 and say within five to 10 days. And then if we really want to think about more than 10 days, all we have to do is say greater than 240 edited 10 plus days. Go. So in our case, we've created four outcomes. Besides these four outcomes, we don't really need anything else. So we are going to delete that last outcome and then close that out. I had not included a comma. I added that and now the error has disappeared. Now we have these four constraints with varied increments that have different highlighted outcomes based on these numerical constraints that we set through a variable in this let function. Because we're referencing last edited time and it's an automatic property, we don't have a way to verify that this works. So again, we are going to duplicate this, call it verify, separate it to the other one we called, and then we're gonna remove last edited time and then include. So now when we create a view to verify this, so based on these incremented dates that we've put, it looks like two of these outcomes are not working, right? Because December 7th, and December 1st are definitely more than 10 days ago. And this is not the case. So we have to look back here. Looks like we're missing that date variable. Let's change this. So basically, I accidentally deleted the date variable and the inequality. And we were able to quickly figure out that that was the reason why this formula was not working. So now I've created these test dates with the incremented dates to verify that all four outcomes exist. And we did this by, again, referencing the date property 
which has the same format as the last edited time automatic property. And now that we know that all four of these outcomes work by testing through these dates. So now what we can do is create a board view and we are gonna rely entirely on the outcomes we just created. So once we name it, we can stay on this menu and we can go to group and go to group by and then we can go to that formula that we just verified and bam. So it'll sort automatically by alphabetical. In our case, we want to do a manual sort and maybe we want to see everything from a recency perspective where we want to see what's been worked on within the last two days, what's been worked on within the last two to five days. And as we can see, we have spelling error and it's also capitalized. So we can go back to our other table view where we have that. We can go back, lower it, add the I, and now we can go back to what we had. Notice how when you change the outcome, it it doesn't remove the previous formula outcome that you had before, and so I just hide or delete these so you have the proper one showing instead. Now, what we've created is a neat grouped way through the recency of what database entries were worked on most recently and which ones have been worked on between five to 10 days ago and then 10 plus days ago. And so once we set this up with the automatic property of last edited time, we just need to switch this out we know that this view will work properly and will show the appropriate database entries in its related group. I think that's one of the most underutilized ways that I've noticed people are using Notion Formulas 2.0, creating custom outcomes within a formula and then using that as a way to group your databases in an appropriate way that meets your exact needs. And you can imagine you can add a few filters and a few sorts and now you've created much much more through a more customized group option that automatically extracts from an automatic property like last edited time again we have two examples where we can filter based on the checked whether something is checked or not and whether it's edited within the last 24 hours and then we also use the let's formula to create these groups options that we can group via a board view by and other views by so that we can see when we last worked on it at what time intervals that we can sort of see that by. Last thing I'll just briefly show is the styling piece where you can do dot style and you can specify a color for example and it'll show like that. You can also do comma B for example to bold it. In our case when you're using it to group in a certain view the color and formatting does not translate but if you were to show that it would still style within the database entry itself. So just a small thing to note there. Again, I've covered this in other videos, so I'll keep it short, but you can easily just add a dot style after the text that you specify, and then sort of use this basic walkthrough to hold, add background, do a bunch of other stuff through some very simple quotation marks and a singular letter like I did with bold. I think this was a more raw and uncut video where I showed you some of the struggles I still have when creating these formulas and demonstrating them to you and everybody. But I hope you enjoyed this sort of two levels of Notion formulas that are related to each other and that also build on a previous video that I've created in the past. As you can tell, I'm a little rusty with creating these videos because it has been a few weeks since I've last created my videos. But again, I appreciate all the support and my plan is to keep on going. Uh, in 2024 and to focus more of my time across what used to be on social media into YouTube and just doing more with the channel, maybe having some live streams or other community oriented things that we could do. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I think I will be writing up a community post with a questionnaire asking what everyone hopes to gain from me and my channel. Hope you've had a great start of 2024 so far and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.